Hi everyone, and welcome to the first in a series of Crossing Newfoundland by ATV videos I'll be doing for 2020. First of all, I'm so happy to be able to bring you these videos because I wasn't even sure I was going to be able to make it to Newfoundland this year because like many other provinces, it was shut down to outsiders during the early days of COVID. But the four Atlantic provinces joined together and created a travel bubble, allowing people to move freely between provinces without the need to self-isolate. Sadly, anyone outside the Atlantic provinces couldn't go this year. I sincerely hope those of you that had to cancel your Newfoundland trips for 2020 can make it in 2021. I actually made it to Newfoundland twice this year, a trip in July and another one in September. We did a mix of camping, motels and cabins in July and hotels every night in September. I'm going to combine the video of both trips into this series. Because the East Coast Ferry from Nova Scotia to Argentia wasn't running this year due to COVID, we had to change our plans and do West Coast only tours. In July, we started in Port of Basque and went to Stephenville, Serpentine Lake, Deer Lake, Cloudy Pond, and Robinsons. In September, again, we started in Port of Basque and traveled to Black Duck Siding, Deer Lake, Hawks Bay, Cloudy Pond, and Robinsons. Please help me out with YouTube by clicking the like button below and subscribing to the channel. As always, I hope you like this year's series. My brother-in-law decided to come to Newfoundland with me this year, and since we were camping that meant there was a lot of gear on the back of the Commander as you can see. I topped up the air on the tires before I put the machine on the trailer, and I had to put Moosey back on the light bar on the top because he's our unofficial mascot for our Newfoundland ATV trips. See, he's doing the splits. Once we got the moose situated, we packed all of our gear, we got the commander put on the trailer, and then we made our way towards North Sydney where the Marine Atlantic Ferry Terminal is. It's about a three and a half, four hour drive for us, and uh, we were lucky, the weather was fantastic, and there's always some beautiful scenery uh, on your way through Cape Breton to get there. And uh, once we get to the ferry terminal, or across the street from the ferry terminal, we offloaded our machines, and then we uh, managed to meet up with some of the other fellows that were coming uh, on the trip with us this year. And there's Chad and his father coming right there with the uh, the Ford and the, uh, the red Honda. He just got that this year, too. It's a really nice machine. We got situated pretty quickly, then we drove across the street and went into the ferry terminal parking lot. We had to drive down to the end, and then we just had to wait for them to call everyone to go on the boat. Yeah, I got a couple sweaters. Yeah. yeah. Long sleeve shirt. Well, I took this one with a hoodie on, I took this one with a sweater and a couple of t-shirts. I bet. I bet. This trip is so much fun and has so many unique aspects to it and this is probably the very first unique aspect is being able to drive your ATV or side by side right on this ferry and leave your trucks and trailers behind in Nova Scotia. Like I mentioned before we did two trips this year one in July and one in September. I'm going to try to cut back and forth between the two of them when we're in the same locations. If you're a subscriber and have seen these videos in previous years, you'll recognize Howie and Bill, and they both bought Honda Talons this year, whereas they both had ATVs uh, years prior. Howie had a Honda Rincon, and Bill had a Suzuki King Quad. I didn't take any video up in our rooms or around the boat. Uh, there wasn't much to see anyway. Because of COVID, you had to wear a mask, uh, which is fine. It's just like that everywhere else. But you had to go to your room and stay in your room. There was no restaurant or food service or anything like that that was available. So we basically got on the boat, got to our room, and that was it. And then uh, here we are getting off the next morning. And this is... Uh, on the July trip. Once we get off the ferry, we had to take some time and uh, talk to some officers. Everyone on the boat had to do that and sign a declaration form with our name saying that we didn't uh, have COVID or come in contact with COVID or anything like that. And because of that, they uh, had pushed us up so far, we couldn't get onto the trail that we would normally take. So we had to take the highway and uh, you're not supposed to do that, but, uh, but uh, what can you do, right? Sometimes things happen. Uh, it was no problem. We got to where we needed to go in a short distance here up the uh, highway. Time to get organized. Before we hit the trail, Jeff decided to uh, stiffen up his shocks because of all the extra weight from all the uh, camping gear. And I had told him about uh, the trail being rough with a lot of whoops in some places. This is how she's going to go. Yeah, you're good. Oh, there you go. Yeah. 
Jeez, that was easy. I can't even budge mine anymore. They're all... You got it? You got it? Time to hit the trail. What's that? We were only on the trail 10 or 15 minutes and we had to stop and take some pictures. There's so much scenery here in Newfoundland. You can just, you can stop around every corner to do that. We are on our way up to the top of the Tabletop Mountains right now. It's about a 500 meter um, height difference from sea level to the mountain and only a few kilometers. It's really steep and that's why I'm only doing about uh, 10 or 12 kilometers an hour, which is about uh, 6 or 7 miles an hour. What's this called, yeah. Patrick? <laughs> Both of these were like, uh, everyone, this, everyone was at the same time. Everyone was like, this <laughs> is, uh, I'm trying to think of the name of the mountain here. It's, um, I can't, I have to look it up on the map now. I can't remember offhand. Look at the dust. Hey, down that way. Gorgeous. Beautiful. Okay, I got a story for you. We are on our way back down the mountain now, and we've only been on the trip for about an hour. It's about 30 kilometers, which is about 20 miles. As I was going down the mountain, there was a rock in front of me, um, something big, and I could have went like kind of over it, and I was afraid it might scrape, so I went just a bit to the right. And I thought the road was good and solid there, but it was kind of very soft gravel on the far edge of it. And what ended up happening was it was just like slush if you've ever driven in the snow. It pulled me to the right. I kept turning my wheel to the left to come out of it. And the machine just slid down into this embankment onto the side of the road, like into a ditch there. And uh, ended up bending my tie rod. And uh, so we ended up spending about an hour here trying to straighten it out and fix my uh, wheel because I get a flat too. So here's some of the video of that. Yeah, it came off. Oh no. There we go. Now she's good and flat. Now we can get her up nice and high. Not even looking at the venture, boys. Not even looking at the venture. <laughs> Well, like we might have to skip the beach, the beach after yeah. this. Excuse me. I think we should go straight to the bar. Did you hit a rock? And, and, I think he hit the uh, one. Uh, that, I seen him hit, and the front end just went up like that. And then when you came down, you bounced, and you sort of went that way, right? She went but it kept pulling me. Right. Like it was, it was, it was, like, it, it was, a, it was yeah. pulling me to the right, and I had turned Enough. the wheel to the left. Yeah. But by then, it yeah. had already grabbed me and pulled me yeah. in. My front right tire. Uh, broke the bead so it was flat but that wasn't uh, too much of a f uh, problem to fix but uh, another problem was my tie rod on the right hand side had a pretty good bend in it so then we had to figure out a way to try to straighten it a bit
point here and a point here to loosen it. Oh, okay, here you mean? Yeah, probably. That'll, that'll probably do. I'd say that, that looks good to me right there. And where it's buckled that way, we're going to want to go all the way out on the tie rod, I guess. Fantastic. Oof, I was worried there for a minute. The guys got me back on the trail. And uh, it's, it's handy to have tools and fellas that are uh, handy with that type of stuff. Um, and a Bruce. Make sure you bring a uh, Bruce with you. Not our Bruce though, get your own. Other than my steering wheel being off a little bit, off center, because the tie rod was a bit bent, um, I was fine the rest of the week. sound of those talents. There's Chad and Gordon doing a rip around, doing some exploring of this, uh, this area. And they're in the Honda Pioneer 1000, and man, they have that loaded down with so much gear, you wouldn't believe it. I think I've got some pictures here someplace. I'll try and uh, put them in here later. I realized that uh, the extra time we spent fixing my tie rod put us behind a bit, so we're picking up the pace here. As you can see, the alder brushes are getting very tall in some places. Uh, it's been that way for years, but at least they're back enough, uh, far enough that they don't really bother you any. They do make it a little hard to see around corners here and there, so if they're tight, you just slow down a little bit. It's no big deal. I'm just telling my brother-in-law about Pirate's Haven and that we stay there every year and uh, what a great spot it is and the owners, Paul and Ruth, are such wonderful people and uh, we spend our very last night in Newfoundland on this trip there and you'll see more of that um, in the later videos in this series. Not too much farther past Robinson's, up the trail a bit, a little east from there, is this really nice bridge called Fish, uh, Fischl's Bridge, I believe. And that's like a gypsum wall over there in the background. And we always usually stop and spend a few minutes here. When we came back to do this trip again in September, uh, a lot of these bridges in this area were being torn up or the decking was being torn up to be replaced. So when we got here, uh, the decking was being torn up. They were actually working on it. It was still passable, lucky for us. And it was done by the time we came back, but we did run into a problem with another bridge uh, on our way back. And you'll see that in a later video. Whoever did the decking on this bridge, by the way, did a great job. It looked really, really nice when it was finished. <laughs> Our next stop is going to be the sand pit just outside Stephenville Crossing.
When we came back to the sand pit in September, I wanted to try something a little different. So I threw the drone up to try to get some better angles and everybody was doing it in two wheel drive instead of four wheel drive. We just assumed everyone would get stuck. But uh, these are the results and unfortunately I didn't have the sound recording on the drone at the time. So I'll stick some music in here instead. I was angry right here because I realized uh, my GoPro wasn't recording for the last few minutes going up this long beach outside of Stephenville Crossing where we went through some sand dunes and stuff before we came onto the beach and then had a nice run up the beach and none of it got recorded unfortunately. We can actually go straight down here. Really? You gotta go across the bridge in the highway though. Because I've got a track that we just drove straight down here before. In there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We still have to go across the bridge. Oh, no, no, yeah, we still got to go across the bridge. We got to come back up to the road. Okay, we're almost done with the video. I'm just going to give you a quick recap on the map of where we traveled before I show you the last of it. Uh, we started here in the southwest corner uh, of uh, Newfoundland at, in port of basque and we traveled this r uh, blue line, which is the rail bed, all the way up to Stephenville over here for the July trip. And then in September, we didn't go much farther. We went over here to Black Duck Siding. And um, one of the first things we did in the morning, the mountaintops that we were on, is this section right here off the trail. So you can see it wasn't too far uh, from the beginning of the uh, of the day there. And um, the South Branch, where we were driving around in the water a bit and we had a barbecue and lunch and stuff. Here's Robinson's area where I was showing you where Pirate's Haven is. And a little farther north of that, this flag is where the sand pit is. And then this area right here, just south of uh, Stephenville Crossing is the beach area. So then we just came up here across the road, we stopped and get gas. Then we kept heading north and this orange trail right here, that is still considered rail bed. A train used to go in there years ago to take you into Stephenville. But once you get to the end of that, right towards town, there are several uh, kilometers that you can now drive legally on the road, paved roads right here. It's about four kilometers that'll take you in. That's like two and a half miles. And uh, we drove through to town and we came into, uh, came into here at the Dream Catcher Lodge for the night. And then there's, there, you know, there's gas stations in town, there's uh, restaurants, anything you need. If you need any supplies or anything, you can come right into Stephenville here to get that before you head back out. And then in September, we just went right past that another few miles and uh, it takes you to Black Deck Siding, which is a great spot. And if you are looking for a nice place, uh, Dune Lodge here is a great place to stop at. The accommodations are very nice. And the, uh, the total we drove from Port of Basque up here to uh, Stephenville was about 190 kilometers and that works up to be about 118, 120 miles. 
And uh, it was about the same for black deck siding, maybe actually a little less because we didn't have to take this road, this 10 kilometers into town here. But uh, now I'll get back to uh, finishing the video here. <laughs> Thanks for watching everyone, I really hope you liked the video. Stay tuned for part two, where the July group drives to Serpentine Lake and the September group drives to Deer Lake.